SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in today's video, we're going to cover some important consumer information. I also think it's kind of like a, I guess, a trend analysis, like the direction of connectivity, right? What type of technologies are available to us, you know, what people have access to. And obviously, the better the technology, the more modern the technology, the more reliable your home service is, home broadband, home internet, and faster and, and better, and the more likely you are to be satisfied. And some of this data may actually indicate why your internet may suck. Okay, so if you have fixed wireless access or satellite internet or fiber or copper like DSL or cable, the numbers are really different. So let's take a deep dive into these numbers. This video will be a little bit shorter than the other ones, which is good. I know you guys like shorter videos, uh, but we're going to look at this from two angles. What's been going on since the pandemic? and what's been going on recently year over year. This data is from 2023. When we get the new 2024 data, we'll run that analysis, right? We'll do that overview. But for now, this is where we are. We'll make another video at the time of that follow-up. All right, now with respect to total connections, obviously you see growth, right? From 2020, you're at 111.6 million connections. Now we're at 120.8 million connections, data as of 2023. I expect that number in 24 to be higher, more people getting connected, networks getting built out. So it's been trending up more and more people adopting home broadband. Now, specifically within the technologies, let's start with the growers. Okay, so I'm you guys can see the numbers on the screen. I'll let you guys just go ahead. You can pause, you can pinch to zoom and all those things. But I did went ahead and ran the numbers as percentages for you guys. So the fastest grower is fixed wireless access. T-Mobile 5G Home Internet, Verizon 5G Home Internet, AT&T Internet Air, the regional providers, the WISP companies, wireless ISPs, they're the ones that are showing the most growth and adoption. 250% growth since the pandemic. Why is this important? Because the pandemic was a time where we realized we needed connectivity options. We needed to be more connected. We were doing all these Zoom meetings for school. We were doing all these Zoom meetings for work, work from home. Some people still working from home, right? And all those things. This connectivity need and demand is never going to change. So pandemic, kind of the onset of that to modern times. So fixed wireless access up 250% since the pandemic, up 51% year over year, right? When I crunch those numbers. The next fastest group was fiber. No surprise there. Fiber is up 52% over the course of the pandemic era, right? From 2020 onward. Uh, and then up 15% year over year. That trend is going to continue, right? We're going to continue to see fiber being an emphasis of connectivity. Fixed wireless access too, I don't think that's going to change. So those are your big growers, and those are the ones that I think will continue to grow in the future. Uh, also a grower was satellite, up 14% since the start of the pandemic, up 5% year over year. Now this is all depending, right? We got Starlink, we got satellites in that respect. ASTS is another company to watch. Any investment with like HughesNet and Viasat, that's all kind of the contingent part as to whether or not we see growth there. I think we do. So to me, that trend is up. I just don't know the scale of that trend. I still think terrestrial networks are going to be the primary options for connectivity because that's the only way to create real capacity, right? But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Technologies can unfold and investments can unfold and we'll see. All right, now for the downside. Right, I just covered the upside, the growers. The downside, uh, obviously, cable. Um, now, cable's kind of a mixed bag. Since the pandemic, they're up 1%. But over the last year, they're down 2%. So that trend, do we think it's going to flatten out? Do we think it's going to be you know, kind of the same moving forward? Or do we think that it's going to continue to decrease? Or do we see a resurgence in cable adoption? I don't know. I know they're not building cable. Right? There's no cable builders anymore. They're upgrading existing cable with DOCSIS technologies and mid-splits and other things. But really, I think the move is towards fiber. So if fiber is growing, the anticipation is, is that cable is not. right? Because those two services, while they're different, they are connected with respect to true home broadband connectivity. We'll see how that plays out. Right? Nobody's building cable anymore. They're building fiber. They're selling fixed wireless access, satellites, and stuff like that. Uh, which takes us then to cable, or excuse me, which takes us to copper. All right, so we're talking about DSL services. Down 37% down 
since the start of the pandemic, down 19% year over year. These numbers are going to continue in this direction. The big reason for this is the fact that this is legacy technology that is costly and expensive to maintain. Nobody has built any copper for many, many years. It's not something that any company has been investing into. So the decommissioning process, it getting shut down and cut off and moving customers to other technologies and just cutting it off, period. Uh, it, it, there's no cost benefit to it. Uh, so the big player here is obviously going to be AT&T. They're going to be decommissioning. They haven't been selling it to new customers for a long time. People that have it now will be eventually cut off here in the next couple of years. They'll have to adopt AT&T Internet Air or look for some other solution, which could be SATs, which could be fixed wireless. Um, hopefully new fiber builders. I wish AT&T would build fiber to those places, but you guys know AT&T is, right? So the trending up technologies, clearly in this order, it's fixed wireless access. That's not going to change. They're on a rampage. The FWA builders, the fiber is doing really great and sats, right? Those are all kind of trending up the down. It's the copper piece. It's DSL and also kind of cable, right? Flat to down. And if you're not growing, then you're losing, right? Within the industry that grows, all right? So, um, you know, FWA, it's obviously the Verizon, T-Mobile, and even to a small extent, AT&T uh, for fiber, you know, more B dollars going to fiber means those numbers should continue to increase. And then for SATs, Elon, Starlink, ASTS, Viasat, HughesNet, we'll see where that goes. But all you guys got to know is where is the money flowing? The money is flowing into fiber. The money is flowing into fixed wireless. That's the future of connectivity. Satellites as well. Uh, we'll see how all these things scale in the future. That's currently where things are. But what do you guys think about all this? You all the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Tell me in the comments what you've adopted, what you've tried, how it was for you, what you've got now maybe. You know, kind of tell me about your home broadband journey. But that's all the things for, for this video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you all in the next video.